Guns come with sights, but optics are better. Mounting a nice red dot on your handgun gets you more accuracy and speed. When you defend yourself, you're at a disadvantage from the start, as the attack comes from you usually as a surprise. That means you need any advantage that can help you in general, and even more so with speed. That is why Red Dot is great, but mounting an optic on your handgun can actually destroy it. Of course, there's also a few other good mistakes you can make to screw up your handgun. Leave your gun in the case. Carrying your gun all day subjects it to the environment that includes humidity or your sweat. If you then remove it from your holster and keep it overnight in its case, you'll have a good chance to see some rust soon. Store it in a safe and dry location where the humidity can dissipate. Use the right tools. You have tools in your garage. Great! Keep them for your car. Use specialized tools for guns to work on your firearm. This way you avoid screwing up your screws. With the right tools and the right size, you also save on your working time and effort. Too much oil. Carrying your gun every day and all day brings it in different weather conditions. Usually, when you maintain it, including oiling it, you do it in the warmth of your home. If you use too much oil, it can thick up in cold temperatures. This leads to parts of the gun becoming blocked or the firing pin being unable to reach the primer of the round. If you go to the range, it's better to apply a little bit to little oil than too much. Same holds true when you carry your gun and want to defend your life with it. Also, oil does have a shelf life. This meant it's not enough to oil the gun one time and keep it like this for years. Instead, you need to change the oil of your gun, the same as the oil in your car. Optics coming off. On the first look, mounting your red dot on the slide is easy and simple. Just put it on, put a little blue Loctite on your screws, and then torque them right onto there. What can go wrong with that? The problem is not actually the mounting process, or rather, it is the problem, but you see it later. If you're doing it the wrong way, you'll have to pay for it when using the gun. The one thing that can happen is that the screws shear off and your red dot comes right into your face when shooting. Why would that happen? Plastic mounting plate can come off. Don't believe me? Check Facebook. There you can find a dude that actually got hit by his red dot coming off because of the plastic mounting plates. It's hard to believe, but you do get high quality cum that come with low quality mounting systems for their optics. And this is an example on Facebook where the recoil lugs that say goodbye causing the optic to disconnect. These lugs are meant to take the stress from shooting the gun. This way, the screws actually holding the optic can hold longer. After the recoil lugs failed, the screws took the full force of the recoil until eventually they sheared off. The best way to mount an optic is the direct way. No mounting plates. Just put the optic directly on the slide. As optics are not modular, you might not get what you want going this way. Being stuck with mounting plates, it's much better to invest a few more dollars and actually get some mounting plates made from metal. If you do use a red dot that is actually made for the pistol you're shooting, the recoil lugs are not an issue. The optic cut is milled out specifically for the size of the optic. This way it cannot move as there is metal in front and behind the red dot. That keeps it from moving so that there is no extra force put on the screws. Using modular optics. There are gaps on the front or backs of the optics between it and the slide. This leads to the red dot being able to move whenever the slides reciprocates. Here, the recoil lugs are important to take the stress away from the screws. Changing batteries in your optics. Red dots need electricity. For this, they come with batteries. These can be mounted on the top, at the bottom, or on the side. When you want a red dot that's rather low profile, you will not get around the bottom mounted variant. Batteries have to be changed from time to time, and there's the problem begins. Usually, a battery holds a little bit longer than a year so that the average shooter uses a specific day for changing the battery. That might be his birthday, President's Day, or whatever day he likes. The battery is mounted at the bottom, the only way to swap it out is to detach the red dot sight. That's perfect if you want to screw up the optic or the slide. Backing out screws is not easy, especially when using Loctite. Now you might want to say that you should just not use Loctite. Okay, but in that case, whenever you shoot, the screws back out a little bit. That does not only mess up your zero, but also leads to an optic flying away. Blue Loctite avoids this. This problem is compounded with striker-fired guns that have an extractor running down one side of it. That leads to it having a short and long screw to hold the optics. Applying Loctite, try to use as little as possible. Using too much just makes everything worse for you. To correctly screw the optic and use of a torqued driver, torque them down to 15 inch pounds. Not more, and not less. To make matters worse, all the screws on different optics and guns use different heads. To unscrew the optic, use a soldering iron. 
head it up and put it into the head of the screws. This will loosen the lock tight. Be careful when doing that. Do not touch your optic. Having the lock tight heated up, it's easier to back out of the screws. If you strip a screw, you need to use a drill bit that is hardened as the one for wood will not work. Also, it must be small enough. Be careful when doing that as you can easily damage your gun and or optic. Using a plastic plate, the screw head will squish into the plate. When the plastic expands with different temperatures, it will increase the torque further, making it harder to unscrew. This makes it even more important to use metallic plates. Avoid this problem from the beginning by getting an optic that mounts the battery on the slide or top. There are optics that still give you a low profile like that. Barrel deformations or obstructions. Working on the barrel on your handgun without the necessary care can lead to very dangerous situations. If you, for example, work in your garage and the barrel drops, it might deform when it impacts the hard ground. Also, you can create barrel obstructions by not removing your cleaning gear or by accidentally inserting smaller caliber rounds into your chamber or barrel. All of this will be really explosive when you shoot. It brings the pressure to unsafe levels, leading to catastrophic failures. Barrel cleaning in reverse. If you clean the barrel of your gun improperly, you do destroy the rifling. The grooves are machined into the surfaces of the barrel running from the breech to the muzzle. That is also the only direction in which you should clean it. Cleaning from the muzzle to the breech leads to a little damage here and there that does affect accuracy. This gets worse and worse the more often you clean the barrel in reverse. Never just clean your gun in a hurry. You want to defend your life with it, so respect it. Take your time and clean it well, and it'll serve you equally well. Bad reloads. Reloading your rounds can bring a lot of problems. That starts obviously with overloaded rounds, but happens also with underloaded rounds or special problems, like air in a black powder cartridge. When reloading, be aware that you work with substances that can potentially endanger your life. If you put too much powder into a cartridge, you simply create overpressure. If you leave air in a black powder load, you change the pressure curve. If you underload a cartridge, you speed up the burning process, increasing the pressure very fast. In a pistol, this will blow up your gun. Rifles that are supposed to work with more pressure will just produce a dud. There you have it guys, some of the worst mistakes you can make that will destroy your handgun.